one of the opening songs in your play is about a world turned upside down. Mm. Is that what the service was like for Indigenous soldiers? You have to imagine a world where Indigenous soldiers, well, Indigenous people, you know, just didn't have the rights. You know, it's hard to imagine 100 years on that the world was such an oppressive place for, for black Australia. And so, you know, not being able to earn money, not being able to to be let into not just pubs, but, you know, shops and all of these kind of things. To suddenly, when you signed up for the AIF and you volunteered, there were actually, there was this amazing thing in the, uh, what do you call it, the charter, I guess, of the AIF, uh, that you had to be of substantially European background, I think it was. And you go, oh, what does that mean? Mm. And a lot of Indigenous soldiers were rejected early on. And then there were the two referenda, I think, at the end of 16, 16 and then 16. in 17. Mm. And that's when you see a lot more Indigenous soldiers signing up. Well, not just signing up, being allowed to sign mm. up. Because before then, the medical officer could say, well, we don't think you're substantially European enough. You know, what's that mean? And so suddenly you had all these little, these all these rejection forms saying not yeah. substantially European, not of a uh, significant European background, blah, blah. But after those referenda, a lot more Indigenous uh, men are, are signing up. And there was no way of recording that they were Indigenous. Mm. There's no way of saying, oh, yes, this person's Indigenous. So therefore, the way that the state treated them, you know, this is Queensland or WA, remembering that the Federation was so new that there were so many different laws still in place that uh, Indigenous soldiers were treated very differently by their states, mm -hmm. but in the AIF were treated all the same. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, the armed forces now like to say that they were the first equal opportunity employer in this country. <laughs> so, you know, I don't know, that's a bit funny to say, but this sense that they could earn money, yeah. they could travel, they were treated exactly the same. So this idea that the world was turned upside down, what was up was down, what was black was white, and that, um, creating these units of men. Uh, I think one of the foundation stories of Australia is, is World War One. you know. We think about the Gallipoli story, we think about the Anzac tradition, uh, and this idea of mateship is really, if not formed, then really crystallised during World War One, And mateship uh, in the trenches, in the front, in the desert, this whole idea that if there was a black soldier there, they were part of that mateship matrix. You couldn't extract one. They were all treated as equal. And I guess the beginning points of true reconciliation in this country, where we try to understand each other and our stories. I like to say that if you, you know, if you are facing death together, then it's easier to live together. Mm -hmm. And that sense of how it changed. So for me, this upside down, world turned upside down song was really about saying, yes, how can a black man who's treated so badly in some ways then be treated as a hero in others? Mm.